This is the Field of 12 After Dark brought to you by Bet Rivers. We've been rolling almost an hour. We got a couple more uh, teams to get through here. So, guys, let's move on to uh, to the Texas Longhorns. Okay. Uh, things been going on down there in Austin. Uh, it's been shaky to say the least over what the last decade plus now, right? It's uh, it's been a tagline. Texas is back, right? Well, <laughs> Steve Sarkeesian comes in a little shaky at first, but um, he brings in a, a transfer quarterback, a guy that's highly touted in Quinn Ewers. He's got a guy that has a little bit of experience in Hudson Card. What are y'all's thoughts on Steve Sarkeesian um, and, and Texas football as a whole as we enter this uh, 2022 season? Bryce, we'll start with you on this one. Um, it, man, th- to me, th- this is – he has to prove, Sark has to prove that there are there, – there is progression within this program. And I think what we have seen in this program in the last 10 years is just complete and utter underdevelopment. How many times, and I, I really don't care about stars, but just, just for the nature of this argument, how many times you can have four and five star kids that come out and pan out to be absolutely nothing. At some point, you have to hold coaches accountable for developing kids. I think Coach Sarkeesian is a hell of a coach. I think he's going to have that offense right. I think Quinn Ewers coming in does provide a little bit of, of a spark we'll see I don't really know um, other than the fact that that dude's got more money in the bank than I do and hadn't even touched the field yet um, <laughs> but you know this is a this is a team that I think is going to be if B John Robinson can can stay healthy just tout the I mean Earl Campbell that thing um, give that dude 40 carries a game um, and just again, don't make the big mistakes. This is this is a team that has every in terms of just depth, in terms of um, again talent at every position. They they got it all. They've got enough money. It's it's honestly like you know a, a free for all the Dallas Cowboys with just you know as much money as you could possibly have. I just don't understand how you lose six games in a row. I don't understand how you underperform the way they did last year. And, and, and really, again, to your point, the last decade. So th- this to me is a you, you've got to figure out what's going on in Austin, because I promise you, when you go east <laughs> and at that conference at, at, and, and you're playing those dudes week in and week out, no one is going to care that you're Texas. If anything, they want to bury you because you are Texas. So at some point you got to I, I just I've never seen a guy that, you know, gets beat up by the little kid at lunch and then wants to go and take the big bully on. I don't I don't understand that move for them at all. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Texas has to figure out how to, how to put wins on the on the schedule. OK, uh, coach, you mentioned uh, offline that you spent a little time down recently and uh, you were extremely impressed with um, with some of the younger offensive linemen. Um, that you mentioned give us a little insight to that but also give us give us a couple reasons while you were out there visiting uh visiting the texas longhorns what what pieces of the puzzle do they have that can allow them to take a step this year and be successful is it steve sarkeesian is it a specific position group is it the team as a whole give, give us some thoughts no i i think it's a combination of a lot of things that the same things that bryce was talking about that Really, really, those things that have held the program back, uh, the rating systems, all the other things, you know, guys that, that didn't pan out, guys that never played there or uh, that played there that were highly rated that no one else really, really hardly recruited. I think they're in a different system right now. And um, I'll, I'll say this, uh, the, 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 you know, if you look back at Texas over the last five, six years, right? Their, their old line has been one of the worst ones in the big 12, which is, which is, I can say that right now. Cause I'm not coaching. Crazy. It's it. I mean, you had, and, and it's not to take away from rice, but their, their best guys they had were transfers from rice at Texas, mm-hmm. right? Fifth year transfers that they came there and moved on to, and uh, got on NFL rosters, which that's unheard of, right? At the university of Texas, I think, you know, the, the five guys they signed, Obviously, it's been well documented, you know, what NIL cost them for those guys. They're good players, right? But they're young, but they're really good players. Uh, some of them will be playing this year. Uh, I think the, the the question for Texas will be, you know, at quarterback, just like everybody else in this league, right? 
who's going to show up, which guy's going to play, yeah, who's going to separate themselves. And then this week it'll be big. Um, they both bring to the, the table uh, a lot. You know, you've got a guy who's who's played a little football. You got one guy that can run. One guy's more of a pocket guy. Uh, I, but I will say this: uh, with a defense, I think has a caliber. They've, they've they've got some pretty good players on defense, and I think they're sound in what they're doing. But I don't think, uh, based on what I've seen on paper, and I haven't seen all the other teams. I don't think there's another team in the in the in the Big 12 that has the offensive firepower that Texas has right now. The three, well, I call them the Suns. The three running backs Xavier are Worthy. ridiculous, yeah. right? Yeah. Not good, <laughs> ridiculous, right? The Bijan is a great player, right? But as I say, the Suns, you got the Robinson and Robinson guys and Johnsons, right? They got three of them. They all look the same. 6'2", 225, can really – I mean, they can do it. And so uh, – and on the perimeter, you know, we've got the leading touchdown receiver in, in the league coming back this year, right, as a young yeah. guy. And they signed another worthy. one. Yeah. Yeah, and they're both sub-10, 200-meter guys. They're not very big, <laughs> but no you're doubt. used to this, Bryce. They can fly. So can fly. We like them. You like those guys, right? To, to put pressure on, you get nine in the box, those two cats can go 10-2. I mean, electronic. That, they're the fastest guys on the field. So, you know, you're going to have to respect those guys to get some guys out of the box. And what, what Sark does with RPOs, with play action, with that kind of – you start getting down in there, they, they, they can score points in bunches with the speed on the perimeter. So, you know, from what I've seen, are they there yet? No. You know, but you, you've got the components on the perimeter and in the back that can let this line grow because those running backs are good enough by committee. They can save them up. And I mean, they're, they're like you said, you've got a Heisman Trophy candidate, right? And a senior that will be probably a, a, a third or, or, or third or higher round draft pick right behind. Him. Yeah. Hey, and if I, if I can ask you this, Coach, I'd, I'd love to understand because there is going to be inevitably a very interesting dynamic that comes in, maybe not this year, naturally, because he's playing his senior year at, at Newman or Neiman or yep. whatever it's called. But how do you navigate what you have in Quinn Ewers, which, which I think everybody's right. pretty excited about, but then ultimately this uh, – I mean, just absolute road show that we saw from Arch Manning that that is, you know, inevitably, whether that's his name or he's actually that good remains to be seen. But how do you navigate that as a as a coach, you know, with knowing what you have possibly coming in? Right. So you, you, you worry about that next year. Right. Yeah, don't give me the political answer. Hey, I know. Don't give me that. Hey, I don't I've know. I've never. Wait, 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 no. this is you not didn't a political spend answer. all off season recruiting Archie. Wait, 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 to no, be like, we'll worry political, about that next this season. Is not a political answer, right? I'm gonna tell you why. Because of what you just said beforehand. Hey, you better win this year, no, or you might lying. be lying. Right, Bryce. He's you, lying. You just you just spoke from both sides. He's lying through his teeth. I have never. You spoke from both sides. You said. Little brother, he gets he gets beat up. If that was the case, y'all would if, never if, look at a QB. Let, let, in me, the next let me class. say let me say this. Let me say this, coach. I've never sat in your shoes as a head coach, right. but if I'm a head coach and Peyton Manning's over this year, <laughs> hey, I'm uncle, and and Peyton Manning's asking, hey, hey, how's he looking? Is he gonna be the guy? Hey, is he gonna be the guy? And then and then uh, but, Eli, but, other but again, uncle, again, hey, is he is he gonna be the guy? And then guy. Cooper comes in is. <laughs> goofy as he is and he says hey is my son gonna be the guy what or do you say archie oh archie, archie comes, comes in, in after all like, of them hey coach someone i'm the greatest man on this planet i'm the nicest guy you've ever met and uh i want my son to be the starting quarterback at university how do you manage that but, but wait a minute you guys forgot about what bryce just forgot about what he just talked about texas right <laughs> about what the problems are in Texas. What is, you worry about that. Hey, the guy's got to win. He needs to win this year, Fair right? Enough. Yeah. You worry about that. That That's a every year. Those are the kind of problems that you want to have, not the ones yeah. that the other guys are like, man, I wish we had it. We just talked about four teams that wish they had a quarterback. Yeah, no doubt. And look, I'll go ahead and answer my own question since you won't. 
Um, I'm going to sit in those booster meetings and go to all these functions that you're talking about. And I'm going to say, guys, look, I appreciate all the money that you guys have flowing in that allowed me to buy Arch Manning. This is a rebuilding year. Okay. What we're doing is we're growing our young guys. We're, we're growing our young old well, Bryce, so that Arch no, no. Manning can come and take us. You're, you're talking from both sides now, right? You're talking from both sides, right? It's the you're tequila just, talking coach. I don't know. Yeah, no, but here's the problem. If you came up in this time, just like I said, there's yeah. no way you would sit on that bench in, in Waco all, all those years. No way. That's a great That's true. Point. That's true. Guys, let me, let me ask this last question, uh, and then we'll move on from, from the Longhorns. Uh, B. Jan Robinson, obviously, I think he's a shoe in to be in New York, um, given what he yeah. has done in his career and what we expect him to do. The one thing that worries me, especially with the, um, the uncertainty at the quarterback position, is uh, if, if you're a defensive coordinator and you're going to play the Texas Longhorns, are you stacking the box until those quarterbacks – figure out how to push the ball down the field and beat you in the air that which which will take away the the stat line from from a bj and robinson coach yeah I, I, like i alluded to I, they've got right now i think uh tj I, I, name escapes me their tight end is a really good player uh about six four two fifty moves around you know the way sark will move him behind the line of scrimmage uh get him loose but the 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 two the, those two guys outside, I'm telling you, uh, there's a difference between 10-6. On a football field, 10-6 is fast. 10-2 is a whole nother ball game. And these dudes are dynamic, right? And so they've got to find one more guy, one more receiver. Uh, the, the transfer, I think, got hurt last week. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm just saying, these dudes are electric. And so to load the box with, with them, and you get, like I said, you know, we, we've got one, one guy who is returning, uh, who's played a bunch, who's returning as a, the, the Big 12 touchdown leader, right? So he, he knows what it's like. Whoever throws him the ball because he's wide-ass open because he's so far behind everybody. If they're going to use play action. They're going to – I mean, and Sark's a good enough play caller to understand where to put these guys – and if it wasn't for just one person, if, if, if I was there and I said, you know what, it's just Bijan. It's more than Bijan Robinson. There's three of them. And, and they're going to rotate him, keep him healthy. You got to remember now, Sark spent some time at Alabama where there were a bunch of running backs. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and it was running back by committee there, even though there was a Heisman Trophy candidate every year. And he's selling that on the road right now. And these guys are buying into it. And they're, they're, I mean, those three backs are good. 